Well, I, I don't necessarily give orders. That wouldn't be accurate. You set the doctrine of your church? Uh, if I'm going to pastor the church, then I'm going to be in agreement with its doctrine, yes. Okay, you're going to be in agreement. If they're going to be members of the church, they have to be in agreement with, with the doctrine also. Yes. If they are not indeed, do you allow them to just leave the apartment and leave the church? Of course. They can leave anytime they want? Yeah. Okay. That's, Doesn't seem like it fits inaccurate. any cult to me. That's inaccurate because I know, know of our parents who were um, trying to have access to their daughter who was living with the pastor. and um, Living with or living at the pastor? Living at the pastor's home. At the pastor's home oh, okay. with the pastor in the same home. All right, but there and was nothing was going not, on at you. I mean, she, they I wanted to take her out to dinner, and he would not, you know, he said she had choice. Of course, she can go, but he's he's standing there over her, looking at her as if, if she went. It's a double-bind situation. If you went, you're going against me, and if, if you stay, well, you know, then you, you're doing my Pastor, work. have you had any dealings with the Cult Awareness Network? Uh, yeah, I think they're a cult themselves. Mark, I think everyone's heard about parents hiring someone to kidnap their kids uh, away from these crazy cults. Why is it that kidnapping seems to be the only recourse sometimes? Well, because, okay, I don't, I don't, I won't claim to know too much about this gentleman here's group, but uh, groups like it usually will isolate the, um, the cult member from family, or they will try to um, undermine their ability to communicate with the outside world and consider alternative ways of living or alternative ways of, uh, you know, uh, praising God or living a spiritual life. It's been uh, said, Pastor, that uh, your members, uh, as you've pointed out before, uh, are not free to come and go as they please. I should say, as other people have pointed out before, not free to come and go as they please. And indeed, you admit that five of them have been, quote, unquote, brainwashed uh, out. Uh, uh, can you tell me uh, kidnapping really does make sense then to straighten these people's lives out, It doesn't it? No, it definitely no? does not. Hey, go ahead. Keep no. talking. I'm just going to pick this up before I burn the studio now. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what you basically have, and, and first, it, it's not true that members in my church have not been free to come and go as they please. That's not true at all, okay? And what okay, the lady's wait, doing wait, is... Wait, before, I mean, you know, I mean, are they... I, fit, I, didn't, I, didn't I know finish. you're not finished, okay, but what no, the at the same time you're giving them a misimpression. Wait, you're, telling, okay. you're saying that they're not free to come. Like, you f physically, I know, we all know you don't physically lock the door. But you do. Huh? Yeah, I do. Okay, well, who because gives you the because, right? Because, huh? Who gives you the right? Huh? I think the sanctity of the family does, okay? The sanctity of the family? <laughs> okay. And, now, and I'll tell you, say, be, mentally, no. Who's in this to country, say the family we were is also correct guaranteed, all the time. guaranteed the right. Who's to say that? For freedom. We were, we were guaranteed freedom of thought in our Constitution. That's exactly right. You're darn right. And nobody has the right to come along and make people feel guilty, and neither ashamed, do you. afraid. And neither do you. If, if they're to leave some group or some pastor or somebody and that you claims don't have to any speak right in the name of God. And you don't have any right to grab them? I don't, I, but I do not, they do not start following me around. They don't start, they don't live with me. They do not What are you doing putting your hands on them? If I put my hands on people like you do, young man, you'd have a fit. Well, I'm not saying And this lady my, up here. Let me ask you, you Pastor. Have put your hands on let me people. ask you. Well, well, wait a second. Now, it has been alleged, all right? Right that indeed uh, your flock of sheep may sometime be fleeced by you. All right. 100% well, no, no matter what's been alleged, okay, if I pulled the same kind of nonsense that this gentleman here pulls and this organization over here apparently condones, okay, she'd be sitting it. here behind the microphone saying, don't you abduct people? Don't you sit them down and tie them to a chair? I Don't you do all this stuff, Mr. Wynn? That's what would be coming out of the microphone. Instead, no. we have over here the wolf in sheep's clothing pulling the same nonsense. Well, okay, let's hear if he does pull it. Hey, hey I'll tell you. I, the people he pulls the, it. Huh? I didn't, I'm not no... Uh, don't be uh, starting attributing your biblical passages to me, okay? Because I don't appreciate being called things that I'm not, for one. It's, by somebody that, that claims to speak to in God's name, you know what I mean? Where, what authority do you answer to? God. How'd you, how'd you become a pastor when you got your little white ass kicked out of Bible school? You designated yourself a pastor, am I correct? No, it's not correct. Someone, someone came down, you had a dream, and Jesus came to you and said, you are my pastor, right? Wrong. 
You read the Bible, and you found it in the Bible, right? Wrong. You designated yourself. No. Your five people said, man, we dig you so much, you're so religious, you're our pastor, right? No. How the hell did you become one? Well, I'll tell you if you want to. like to listen. Okay, good. like to listen. How many times did you get in bed? Let me hear him, let me hear him tell me. Yeah. Let me hear him tell me, and then you ask that I'd question. be interested in hearing who designated your pastor as well. Who's okay. got to tell a story? There's uh, passages in the Bible that lay out the requirements to say that who is um, to be and who is not to be. And the church that we formed without a pastor got together, went through the qualifications, and chose me to pastor that flock. Okay, what happened after the third day? Well, after the third interesting thing, I ran into uh, cigarette smoking saved me, uh, Mort, you'll be interested in knowing, because I broke, I broke the rules. I broke the rules. There was, they did not allow smoking at Barrytown, which is the Eastern Seminary of Unification Church. At three in the morning when I was supposed to be sleeping, I snuck out onto the grounds to have cigarettes. Uh, there were other people there who were also uh, uh, anxious and, and doubting and wondering. We got together every single night, and basically we debriefed each other. As a result, none of us went in, although one of us did have a psychotic break and was, and was hospitalized for six I months. This is, um, oh, this is fact. I think it's fact. I think it's fact. Don't tell me what happened I in my know. life. We'll be back this in just a second. I want to hear from the audience, and I want to hear the rest of them. Stand by. This is Michelle Michaels of WDVE Radio, and it's going to be a weekend to remember at the Three Rivers Regatta. Join the hometown team. Of In the short time we have left, I just wish to ask the Reverend here uh, a question, Reverend. Uh, maybe indeed I have maligned this man. Hmm? You have tried your best to. That's uh, sure. Indeed, if I had had the Reverend James Jones here before he took his tip to Guyana, yeah. where he killed 914 of his parishioners. Would you defend his right too, dear reverend? May I? Would you defend his right, reverend? Well, you're Would you defend his <laughs> right? <laughs> Would you? Would you defend his right? Up to right? a point, yes. Was he a cult? No. To he a wasn't a cult. He was an atheist. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, we gotta listen to this crap. This is where the cult is. No, no. You're the cult. No. You he should was, resign he was from your <laughs> church. They need a spiritual leader, <laughs> not a satanic leader. Good night, everybody. You love it. You hate it. But you watch him, and now you can see Morton Downey Jr. live at the Syria Mosque Ballroom Friday, September 30th. Tickets go on sale this Friday, August 5th. Brought to you by DeCesar Angler and WPTT-TV22, Pittsburgh's great entertainer.